Hey, everybody, welcome back to Locked In, where we give you your football intel on everything concerning the college game today. Uh, as if things could not look better for the Tennessee Volunteers, um, I guess they do get better. Uh, today, big news breaking out of Nashville. George McIntyre, junior quarterback from for Brentwood Academy, has uh, committed to play uh, college football for the Volunteers. And just to put it mildly, this dude is something else. Six foot five and a half, 185 pounds. Like we said, a junior at Brentwood Academy who plays in the Division II private uh, league in Tennessee. He is the number three quarterback over. Is this right, Chance, number three overall? Uh, three quarterback and number 16 nationally. So he's the he's number 16 prospect overall, right? Yeah. Number three quarterback overall and the number one in Tennessee. So they have definitely picked up quite a gish. So what can you tell us about McIntyre in general? This dude, not only – he's like the next Nico, I guess you'd say. This dude has an insane pocket awareness. He has great mobility. He led his basketball team last year uh, in the D Division II private Brentwood Academy. He led them to the state championship last year. So not only can he play football, but he's just an athletic guy. He's a freak of nature. So this dude can do that. But he also plays a lot like Nico with his pocket awareness, his mobility. He has a big arm. He can make big throws. But not only can he make them big throws, he can put a rope across the middle of the field into the tightest window that you've ever seen. It looks exactly like Nico, pretty much. So he can run, he can throw, he can do it all. So let's go ahead and look at some film on this guy. This film is definitely worth a watch. Yeah, you'll see him right here. Just take his drop. He'll get some pressure. He takes a step, rolls out left, and I mean just delivers right here. Deep ball. So I mean, you can see that rocket arm first play. The second play, I want to point out that he has the rope. Look at that throw all over the middle of the field. I mean, that is an absolute dart. We'll go back and watch this, and I really want to point that out because most quarterbacks are afraid to throw over the middle of the field. You look at this. He's throwing into a window right there with two people, one over top and one underneath of his wide receiver. And, I mean, that's a pretty tight window, especially being in high school ball as a junior. Um, so he throws it, and, I mean, it's on a line. Lands right in the dude's hands when he's within a foot of a defender. So, I mean – great accuracy and, right there and you know one of the things too on that one that i well let's just well, yeah let's watch that because i was say this next play is just too crazy i love his demeanor he's just he knows he's got it i mean he knows that he has absolute got it absolutely got it when he throws this one just watch how relaxed he is like yep there it is just watching it go in. I mean, I, I like that. He, he's got some – I mean, that, that's beyond confidence. And I think, that you know, if you think about that first play, I mean, you don't have to go back to it. That is a 50-yard strike on the run. That That's what you want to see. I mean, that's got to get you fired up, you know, if you're if you're a Tennessee guy. Go I mean, to that third play, though. Let's just – Say that's a 30-yard strike, and, I mean, that ball isn't leaving the ground right more than yeah. seven, seven feet. That's insane. No. But but this third play, this is this is what you get right here out of this guy. I mean, you got three people around him. He's running. He makes a spin move in the backfield, and he gets the ball downfield for a long run. I mean, that – we'll watch it again right here. It's the same play. But, I mean, this dude is insane. Good the Lord. pocket awareness and – oh. That's an, this dude is insane. That's all you can say. He's an athlete. I'm telling you, man, that's a – this is a good get for Tennessee. Yeah, and this this throw right here, this is why Zach Wilson got drafted number three in the NFL draft when he did. You watch him right here. He rolls out. He flips his hips back to get himself in position to throw the ball, and then mm -hmm. flips his hips into the throw. So that right there, it's exactly why Zach Wilson got drafted as high as he did. This throw right here that this kid is making as a junior in high school. And you got to think too. He knows he's fixing to get his rib cage knocked through his chest. I mean, he knows he's going to get hit. Guy, but dude still throws an absolute strike. Man, I'm telling you, he's elusive. That is elusive. Look, good lord. And he don't even look to run the ball. You know, he looks and to to find someone to push the ball down the field. And you know, I mean, that's like in in D two Tennessee. He's playing against guys every single Friday. 
Yeah, like he's Anderson's playing against D1 Friday. recruits. Yeah, he's, he's playing. Right? That's just like, you know, we talked about when we were down there, you know, which I didn't get to see it, but, you know, you and some other guys did. The uh, the championship game for that uh, classification. I mean, every coach who was everybody in college football was at that game, uh, Baylor and McCauley. And these are these are teams that this guy's seeing week in and week out. And look at him. Look at him. Good yeah. Lord. Dude is something else. And you know what? People like to hate on him because his record at Brentwood Academy last year was two and ten. Um, but you gotta think, this dude is in the same division that two teams who played in the state championship for division two private, they played in the state championship. But Baylor and McCauley, three of his losses were to the two state contenders for their his division. So I mean, this dude plays in the highest division of the highest classification um in Tennessee high school football. And you know what? He's very good when he does it. So you play against the best and you look the best, this kid is something. And you know, and this is not to knock him, but um you have to you have to also think that when when a team like Brentwood Academy is matching up against like two times against Macaulay, one time against Baylor, and you know, you throw, you know, probably who else is in there, like Knox Catholic and a few other, you know, uh perennial uh powers. This the team surrounding him, I mean, just from what I see on his huddle film, they don't stack up to teams like Baylor and McCall. They simply don't. So one, I mean, in some cases you wonder about uh, quarterbacks. Like, I mean, how many of them are legit? You know, how many of them are made by receivers and players around them? You can't say that about this guy right here. I mean, this, I think that he is the genuine article. And if you just do the math, kid graduates in 2025, right? So when he comes to Tennessee, that will put – Nico will be a junior at that point. Am I correct? Yeah. And so what you really have here – and I have no doubt that they're going to do everything they can to keep both of those guys in Knoxville. And I think they can do it because you have to, you have to, you have to realize that the reason that you're going is that you have confidence that Josh Heifel is going to be able to you know, make you into what you need to become. And I think he's shown that. And I think that Nico is just going to elevate, you know, his, uh, his identity, you know, as a builder of quarterbacks at Tennessee. Uh, this guy's going to be waiting in the wings. Uh, he's going to have, two years, maybe even three years if Nico goes early to the draft. It just depends on how that works out. Uh, he's coming in knowing that he is going to be the next in line, and he's going to have, you know, a year, maybe two years to develop. Uh, there's no telling what this guy could become, and it really uh, it really bodes well for Tennessee because I think that, I mean, this is the kind of guy that you want uh, to be uh, waiting in the wings even if you've already got a big-name quarterback. I mean, it's they're doing something right up there. Yeah, if you're a Tennessee fan, I think what you hope for is you hope uh... – Nico stays because next year he'll technically be a redshirt sophomore. So you hope he mm -hmm. stays one more year. So you get three years out of Nico playing, and then you get a uh, you get George McIntyre to sit behind Nico for a whole year just to watch him play, learn from him, and you know get better. And then after you give him a year, and you know you get some weight on him because he is mm -hmm. one eighty five. He's he's built like Nico. You get some weight on him, and you know you get him repetition in the offense. You get him to learn more. So this dude, when he steps on the field, will look crisp and refined, and that'll be very good for the Tennessee offense. I think, too, something that has to be thrown in there. I think a lot of people – you know, you had a lot of complaints with people wanting uh, Heupel to start um, Nico over Milton this year, and that's understandable. Um, you know, I think that Joe Milton, he did the best he could, but he had – you know, he had limits – and I think that people saw that Nico probably had a lot more upside. And I think the Iowa game shows that he has way more upside uh, than Milton had. But the thing is, it says something about Nico that he did sit this year. You know, it was basically a red shirt year. Um, having a guy like that to then tell a guy like McIntyre, hey, there's real benefit in you hanging out and developing. Uh, I think that that helps that helps Tennessee to make the argument, you know, in the when the uh, I guess in the age of the transfer portal. Um, I mean, I'm telling you, I mean, you know, I'm I'm a guy. I'm, I'm not like I say, you know, I'm not one of those like I don't drive an orange truck, but you know, I am a Tennessee guy, and whenever I see this guy on film, I'm thinking, it's this is going to work out for us? This is really going to work out for us because uh, I mean, this is this is impressive of of a uh, of a highlight film as I think you could ever hope to have. Yeah, and I mean. 
what's so impressive is who he's playing against. It's not like he's out there playing against nobodies. Like these guys have right. names. Like they are D one prospects, and they'll be good in the future. I mean, you've got guys going to Alabama, Tennessee, teams like of that nature and that caliber that you know he's playing against week in and week out. I mean, all I can say is, I mean, it's a, it's a good day to be a volunteer. Yeah. So, you know, this kid, you're getting somebody who can pass, who has elusivity, who can run. Um, he's got a deep ball that is, you know, unprecedented. Um, so, I mean, this dude is literally like Nico, the second coming of Nico. I mean, Nico, he hasn't really proven anything in college yet, but you just look at the dude and he's off the charts. You, you look at him on paper, dude's insane. Same thing with George McIntyre. He's an athlete. Um, so, I mean, I think the future is very bright for Tennessee, and I know we've said that a lot, but you have the next mm. seven years of Tennessee just in two guys right here, and people are going to want to come to Tennessee because these guys will be there. So, I mean, you got to think, Josh Hopple and the Tennessee Volunteers are in a very good spot up in Knoxville. Definitely. Anything else to be said on McIntyre? No, I mean, I think the film pretty much speaks for itself. Uh, I agree. With that, yeah. With that being said, I think uh, think next year we'll try to go and see McIntyre and get a better breakdown on him, you know, go look at him in person. Because, I mean, I'm sure he'll be pay playing right where I live sometime next year. So look forward to that in the future. But for us here, stay locked in.